My name is Victor Ilisalituri. I am junior because my father is named the same way. He is also an orthopedic surgeon in Mexico. He's more dedicated to sports medicine, but I do kind of a combination of uh, sports medicine within the hip and hip reconstruction. I work in a place called the National Institute for Rehabilitation, and that's like the major reference center for uh, uh, orthopedic pathology in the country. And I had the service of joint reconstruction where we do total joint replacement and hip arthroscopy as well. Well, when we uh, started, we had very basic access uh, instruments. And uh, most of what we did back then was to remove stuff from inside the joint. And then uh, in the mid 2000s, uh, we got into repair and repair technology, which we basically took from the shoulder. And from then on, it opened up a uh, field of technology that we could apply, plus the introduction of femoral satabra impingement to the whole philosophy of hip arthroscopy. So that's when uh, really the um, endoscopic access to the uh, inside of the hip joint became useful because back uh, before FAI, we probably were doing random procedures like taking out loose bodies or synovial tissue and stuff like that. But really it was femoral stellar impingement that gave us a reason to exist and a method as well. A lot. A lot. I mean, I got uh, things like uh, famous surgeons telling me that's a procedure looking for an indication or uh, what else are you doing in the hip joint besides just looking inside. So yeah, lots of opposition and uh, it took about 10 years to make the general public understand first the philosophy behind pathology in, in the young adult and then the uh, technology. So it took, a long, it took a long time. Oh yeah, it was, it has been, uh, I mean my career has uh, led me to meet wonderful people throughout the years and to visit great places like Cambridge and, and to share my experience with, with a lot of surgeons from around the world. So it's, it's a real trip. I, uh, I think all of us want to take this to the next level uh, and then develop it further in a way that we're uh, going not only inside the joint but also around the joint. Uh, invading more spaces endoscopically and sometimes going back to open procedures when we realized that the endoscopic technique was probably not the best of tools to handle with that. So without the experience of being using it extensively, we wouldn't be at this point where we know where it's uh, more suitable or less suitable or uh, the limitations of, of the whole thing. I think uh, cartilage injuries are something that uh, we haven't figured out, not only in the hip, but in every joint. So uh, technology that allows us to repair advanced cartilage changes in order to preserve a natural joint should be the way to go, and definitely within the hip as well. I would tell them to follow their dreams and never think it's not possible. If I go back to my residency time, I wouldn't even imagine that I've been and have met the people that I have uh, throughout my career. So uh, I'm very blessed and really the younger guys don't have to limit their expectations. Just believe that it can be done and they'll do it. The worst mistake is poor patient selection. And uh, that's probably something that you have to learn the hard way. 
once you are experienced enough and uh, have done a number of procedures, you turn back and you see a bunch of uh, cases that had not the best of indications. And those probably were the ones that did not go that well. And uh, if you have the knowledge that you acquired throughout the years back then, then you'd probably be a better uh, surgeon in a way of indicating the procedure more precisely. I would thank and apologize to the same people, probably, because I've uh, learned a lot from them and I've uh, probably made them struggle uh, to teach me. But definitely Tom Bird, Tom Sampson, Ricky Villar, uh, Mark Philippon, I mean, a bunch of guys, and uh, Joe McCarthy. Um, I'm sorry if I'm uh, forgetting one, but I mean, the names uh, that uh, people that I've uh, encountered throughout my career, I mean, these, these are guys that I see uh, more often than my own relatives, because I see them maybe five or six times a year. And there's family that you only see once a year in Christmas. So throughout the year, I, I'm a lot with them and we have a very special relationship. And I, I love this, I really like it. Oh yeah, you know, the, uh, when you're traveling on a plane for hours and hours, and you know that you're gonna meet the bunch and get together and share your experience, you always have a case or an x-ray to show them and you always have something that you want to talk to them about. So it's exciting, it's always exciting. It could be like everything. Uh, maybe you have two or three weeks in, uh, in a stint that are monotonous and predictable. But every now and then comes a case that challenges you, your, your knowledge and yourself and you go back and you say, wow, I have a lot to learn still. And that's, that's really what makes uh, us go. And uh, I'm in a teaching institution, so uh, you keep sharp uh, as an educator and you try to provide a good example for, for uh, the younger generation to follow. And, and, uh, and hopefully by the time I need treatment, they'll be good enough.